Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Good to see your smiling faces today. I trust that every one of you are doing well. We're upright. And I took on nourishment this morning, Pastor, so I guess we're doing good, aren't we? <laughs> How many of you had a chance to look your lesson over? Anybody? So I told my wife when I delved into it, I said, I'm going to revert back to what Brother G used to tell us. <laughs> it's a reading out of the book of Zechariah, and he's a minor prophet. And Brother Grissom used to say, Pastor, he said, I'm not a prophecy preacher. I don't claim to be. I'm just telling you. There's just a couple of things you need to know. Jesus is coming, and be ye ready. And if you do those two things, the rest of it, really, it, it'll work itself out. <laughs> but as I delved deeper into it, and I did a little research in this Bible, Pastor, and it was a great help. Very, very interesting, enlightening, so... With the Lord's help and with your help this morning, how many of you are going to help me? Amen. All right. We're going to delve into it, and I believe God's got something for us that he, he would like to tell us today. Many of you believe we're living in trying times. But God knows exactly where we are, and he knew about these times before they ever came to pass. And he knows where we're at. He's going to be with us. He has been with us, and I believe he'll continue to be with us. Amen. Many of you believe that. Amen. So we'll jump right into our lesson text this morning. And, Pastor, if you would read our focus verses here in a few moments. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. So you can see that it's, it's still, it doesn't change the meaning, but it's a little easier for my little simple mind to comprehend. So... I'm going to read from the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. We'll read through verse 10. The New Living Translation says, Then the angel showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. The accuser, Satan, was there at the angel's right hand. How many of you found that sucker, I'll say, to come around and torment and accuse all the time trying to cause problems? accuser of the brethren. The accuser Satan was there at the angel's right hand making accusations against Joshua. And the Lord said to Satan, I the Lord reject your accusations, Satan. Yes, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. This man is like a burning stick that has been snatched from the fire. Joshua's clothing was filthy as he stood there before the angel. So the angel said to the other standing there, Take off his filthy clothes. And turning to Joshua, he said, See, I have taken away your sins, and now I am giving you these fine new clothes. Then I said, They should also place a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean priestly turban on his head and dressed him in new clothes while the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord spoke very solemnly to Joshua and said, This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. If you follow my ways and carefully serve me, then you will be given authority over my temple and its courtyards. I will let you walk among these others standing here. Listen to me, O Joshua the high priest, and all you other priests. You are symbols of things to come. Soon I am going to bring my servant the branch, and the branch is referring to the Messiah. Now look at the jewel I have set before Joshua, a single stone with seven facets. I will engrave an inscription on it, says the Lord of heaven's armies, and I will remove the sins of this land in a single day. And on that day, says the Lord of heaven's armies, each of you will invite your neighbor to sit with you peacefully under your own grapevine and fig tree. Pastor, would you read our... Focus first, please. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then shalt thou also judge my house, and shalt also keep my quarters. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee. 
And our title today is Seeing Beyond the Present. If we only look, church, at what we see today, on this day, January the 17th of 2021, things look a little bit bleak. Sure. But we're not just looking at today. We're looking at the future. God's got it. He's got the future. He's got today. He had yesterday. And he'll have tomorrow. Because... That's what makes him God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to talk to our hearts. Dear Lord, we appreciate the opportunity to gather in your house today. We just ask you in the most simple and humble way we know how, Lord, to let there be something said that would encourage our hearts. Lord, we just ask you to speak to our hearts, Lord. Walk the aisles of this sanctuary. Talk to us. Encourage us. Lift us up, Lord. Give us strength. Give us spiritual strength, physical strength, mental strength, Lord, to stand this test of time. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, Lord, for your hand of protection upon us. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Most middle school students have heard of Alex. They know him better by his less than humble moniker, Alexander the Great. But fewer students outside of Sunday school have heard of Zach. His full first name was Zechariah. He was one of the final minor prophets in the Old Testament. Zechariah wrote and prophesied around 520 BC and he prophesied of a conqueror coming through Syria, Philistia, and ocean front country of Tyre. Nearly 200 years later, Alexander conquered Syria, then Philistia, then Tyre. He besieged them for seven months, but Tyre eventually fell, just like Zechariah prophesied. Finally, Alexander set his sights on Israel. Zechariah knew his people would be on this conqueror's hit list, but God would defend him. According to history, the high priest Jaduah prayed when he heard Alexander and his marching hordes were advancing toward their country. God answered his prayer and told him to open the gates to greet Alexander. When Alexander saw Jaduah, he prostrated himself before the high priest and worshipped God. Someone brought him the scroll of the book of Daniel, and Jaduah showed Alexander the prophecy of a horn that would defeat the Persians. Alexander realized his wars and conquest were prophesied hundreds of years before they ever started or ended. Just like Zechariah had prophesied, the world conqueror left Jerusalem unscathed, all, and all that history is found right in your Bible in the Old Testament book of Zechariah. What a major, minor prophet. What an awesome God. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. What an awesome God. <clears throat> this lesson, I feel, is very fitting for the day and hour that we live in. As I mentioned a few moments ago to you, seeing beyond the future. If we didn't have a hope of tomorrow, if we didn't have a hope, Brother Robert, that God was in control and he was taking care of this, it, we'd have more than just physical difficulties. We'd have mental, emotional, we'd have all kind of difficulties because our mind couldn't compute this dealing with it on our own. But I'm here to tell you today we're not dealing with it on our own. There's someone that's in charge. There's someone that's with us. And he's got this Amen. going forward. I believe that with all my heart. Think back just over the last year. Let's just think back to January 1, 2020. If someone would have told us about this coronavirus, COVID-19, let me see a show of hands <clears throat> that would have believed it. I don't think any of us would. Why? Because we've never seen anything like it, Sister Bauer. In our lifetime, and in our parents' lifetime, they've never saw anything like it. We don't know anyone alive today that had ever seen anything like it. And things like this aren't just, they're not supposed to happen 
in the 21st century. But it did. We couldn't fathom that the country would just pretty much be placed on lockdown for an extended period of time. There would be multiple weeks that we wouldn't come to church, and it wasn't because we didn't want to be here. It's just that everyone I think that's here today felt like that that was the right decision to make to distance ourselves for a little while. Fortunately, <coughs> the pastor, Brother Robert, worked diligently to, to communicate. We had the three sevens, Brother Robert. Still having them every week. And they've been a blessing to us. We still were in communication with one another. And most importantly, we were in communication with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Many people couldn't report to work. Many would work from home. You wouldn't be comfortable to go in a restaurant to have a meal with family and friends. <clears throat> and our wonderful, blessed masks, we would be required to wear them when we were in public. Now you tell me who one year ago today would have believed all this would happen in 2020. Yet by the grace of God, we're still here. He has his protection, protecting hand upon us. He has kept us. Some have been sick. But praise the Lord, everyone that's had it in our local congregation has recovered. Some are here today. By the grace of the Lord, we're still moving forward. And God knows exactly where we're at. Do we know what the future holds? Absolutely not. None of us do. But we know one thing, Sister Rich, we know who holds the future. Jesus Christ holds the future. And I believe we can safely say, God's got this. How's it going to play out? I don't know, but he does. He knows exactly how it's going to play out. And he has his people in the palm of his hand. I believe that with all my heart. He's going to take care of his people. As we refer back for just a moment to the lesson text that we read, Zechariah was a visionary prophet. God gave him multiple visions. Eight, I believe, was the number. And the visions are all narrated according to the same pattern. Number one, Zechariah received a vision. Number two, he inquired about the meaning of the baffling vision, I think, Seemed like most visions in the Bible were baffling until the Lord or someone that the Lord was using revealed them as to what was actually taking place. And number three, Zechariah was given an explanation by an angelic attendant. So to sum the book of Zechariah up in a couple of moments, what we need to know is this. The theme of returning to God and to Jerusalem runs throughout the book of Zechariah. Do you believe that the Lord wants us to return to him today? The parallels, the deeper I got into this lesson and the more I studied it, the parallels of what went on in that day and time and the parallels of where we're at today. Brother Bauer, I believe the Lord wants us to come back to him. Amen. I believe he wants the United States of America yes. to turn back to him. I believe he wants the world to turn back to him. The people should turn from their wicked ways and return to God, according to Zechariah 1, 2 through 4. And Zechariah 2 and 4 tells us, although few of the exiles at that time had came back to the holy city, Jerusalem would eventually overflow its walls. We're not overflowing here today. But that doesn't mean that we won't be overflowing at some point because this is not our church. This is God's church. Yeah. It's just a physical building that he's allowed us to come and worship him in. And he occupies this place. And he's the one that gave his life on the cross so that we'd have an opportunity to be saved. So as much as we want more people here, more souls saved, how much more do you think the Lord Jesus Christ wants it full? 
and want souls saved. Zechariah seven and uh, excuse me eight verses seven and eight says God's people would come from every direction. You say, well, I don't see that today, but God's not finished yet. This is a story about what happened in the past, and we know God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and it's a story about what God is able to do in the future. Not what we can do, but what God can do. Yes, Zechariah 2 and 11 lets us know the return of the exiles would result in other nations returning to God. How many of you believe if the United States of America has a revival, it will branch out, yes. Pastor, to other yes. countries around the world, and there will be other people saved. But it needs to begin right here in our hearts. It has to start with our personal relationship with God. You say, well, I can't bring revival. No, but we can bring revival to our own heart and soul by communicating and walking with the Lord. And if enough people do that, what happens when you... Strike a match or set a fire. I did a little bit of burning the other day cleaning up some fence rows. And I might have a little bit of trouble getting it started, Brother Robert, but once I kindled the grass just right and got the wind knocked off of it and got it started and then pulled a little more to it to fan the flames, pretty soon the wind caught a hole and here it went. And it took off down that fence row. And that's the same way with living for God. If we and the flames in our heart, in our soul, in our, li our lives, it, it reaches out and it'll engulf someone else and it'll help yeah. someone else and then that flame grows and pretty soon there's a flame going that will reach our community. Yeah. We can't do it on our own, but we can have a part in it. Right. We can have a hand in it. Salvation would come to the Gentiles as they began to pray and seek God. Does that sound like that might still work today? That salvation would come to America if we pray and seek God. And I believe, church, there's been a lot of people praying. There's been a lot of prayers gone up. There were many, many, many people at our state capitol praying and asking God for favor for our country. And I can tell you, it'll work out somehow. God's got this. How will it work out? I don't know. But I know the one that does know. And he's got this, and I believe he will take care of his people. Do you think the Lord might be trying to tell us something? The parallels between what we read and the world that we live in today. When it looks like things are at their very worst, that's when God's at his best. When we have no other place to turn, how many times have you seen it you didn't you didn't know what to do. You were backed in a corner. Maybe a loved one was sick and you said, God, I've got to have your help. We've got to have your help in our family. And how many times has he pulled us through and taken care of us? God's got this. Many times Bible prophecy is to encourage us. <clears throat> Zechariah 13 and 6 says, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Now, there's a little discrepancy maybe as to exactly when this book of Zechariah was written. But I don't think there's any discrepancy that it was hundreds of years before Jesus Christ was born. But that prophecy in Zechariah 13 and 6, and again it said, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. And we know exactly who they were talking about, what this scripture was talking about, even though that prophecy was hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And I'm getting ready to close. <clears throat> Just as sure as that prophecy was fulfilled, the prophecy of the second coming of Jesus Christ will also be fulfilled. You say, when's that going to happen? I don't know. The Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. But we do know and we can see with two eyes and hear with two ears 
and look around us and see that things are getting much closer than they've ever been in our lifetime. Jesus is coming back, and I believe that will be sooner than we probably really expect. The world continues on. They don't seem to be overly concerned at this point, but Brother Robert, that don't change the fact he's coming. Whether the world is looking for him or not looking for him, he's going to come back at that appointed time. And my prayer for my family, my soul, and all of us is, Lord, help us to be ready. Help us, Lord, to be ready. And the souls of our families, extended families, and it, friends, it can reach on and on and on. We don't want anybody to be lost. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that we need to encourage them <coughs> to come to the house of the Lord. So we must cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. How many of you believe Jesus Christ is the armor of light? Salvation, the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's light. What's going on in this world, and if you read your phone or you watch the news, it's darkness. Yeah. I've just about gotten to the point that I refuse to read it, Brother Robert. I don't even want my mind muddled with it. Yeah. I can't change it, so if there's something I can't change, then I just will concentrate on something I can change. And so many things in this world we can't change, but we can change our relationship with the Lord. Amen. We can work on that. We can work on drawing closer to Him. This world is full of darkness, but it's no challenge for our Savior. <clears throat> and I'll say it one more time. If we can see beyond the present, we can say God's got this. He's got this, and He's going to take care of us. Our job is just to serve Him Live for him today. If we wake up tomorrow morning, live for him tomorrow one day at a time. And the task is not too great if we just take it one day at a time. Lord bless you.